Last episode, we headed to France. This episode, we're heading to France. It is the Europa League quarterfinal, and we are taking on a little old team in Lille. Yes, we're heading to the Stade Pierre Moroy. I hope I said that correctly. Uh, they're currently second in Liga. They're a very, very good team, and of course, they're in the Europa League. Uh, naturally, PSG are doing PSG things. I don't think this game's going to be as easy as the last one, where, of course, we took on... Nice. They're in 10th. Nice are really bad. Last episode, we had our youth intake. We hammered Nice. We played Liverpool. We might have lost that one. We're back today in April. Let's hope we're not going to be made fools of. Hello, you lovely lot. Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is episode number 87, and I do just want to give you guys a little bit of a heads up that in the next few episodes, I say few episodes, but the next little bit, we are going to be pre-recording ahead. I'm going away, short little vacation, enjoying some time with the missus. As a result of that, I'm having to record videos ahead. So when you leave comments telling me to do stuff and I ignore you, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just sat on a nice sunny beach getting a tan. Who, who am I getting? I'm not getting a tan. Look at me. I'm the pastiest white person you know. I said that we lost to Liverpool last time. We didn't lose to Liverpool last time. It was a 4-4 draw, wasn't it? That was actually a really good result. I forgot about that. Yeah, Gonzalo Rodriguez, turning up hero. Yeah, that was... You know what? It felt like a loss in a weird way because we were behind for so long. We did get something from it. Maybe the negative mood is more reflective of the results since you were last here. Of course, we beat Nice in the second leg of the Europa League. Uh, yeah, we went 8-1 on aggregate. You can see why we didn't do that game last episode. Beyond that, though, a 3-3 draw against Everton was disappointing. A 1-1 draw against Fulham... Again, disappointing. Fulham have caused me all kinds of issues this year, haven't they? We drew against them right at the start of the year, 1-1. We've drawn against them again, 1-1. Most recently, though, we got a really emphatic result against Tottenham. You might remember we spanked them earlier on in the year. We've done it again, 4-0 on this occasion. Rojas with a hat-trick. Yeah, he's having fun at the moment. He's been scoring some really good goals, playing some really good football. And to be fair, in spite of the fact that we've slipped up with a couple of draws, we're still in a tremendous position where, well, with how many games left? Seven games left? We are currently in third place. But today we are focusing on European football. We have got a Lille game away from home to kick things off. Brentford midweek, we're not going to worry about that in the episode. And then, well, hopefully we'll take Lille on at home. I'm not anticipating this to be easy as last time. We're going to head to Lille. 50,000 seat a stand. This should be a good away day. Anyway, for today's away day, we are leaving little old rugby and we are heading to France yet again. Not quite as far away this time. We're heading to Lille, which I have actually been around Lille once. A friend of mine got robbed while we were there. Yeah, good times. Anyway, I have spotted it on the edge of town. Here we have the football stadium, the Decathlon Arena. Of course, it has a sponsor. Let's look at it on satellite view. Okay, first things first. Hmm... I don't want to say modern and soulless, but it's got that vibe around it. No solar panels, though. Big thumbs up. Now, in terms of parking, there is parking across the road, and I assume this is probably used as parking. I'd like to think it's concreted over. Maybe they're building stuff here instead. It could also be that there's underground parking, because it looks like there's a big concrete base under the ground. Either way... There's not a lot to do around it, is there? I mean, th there's no KFC. I'm just making sure I've not missed the KFC. Yeah, there's definitely no KFC here. Okay, the Decathlon Arena. What street view? Okay, okay. Mm, it might be about to redeem itself here. I'm looking at the maze of lines inside thinking we're going on an adventure. First, let's just have a look at La Table, which I assume is just some restaurants or something outside the ground. Okay, well, I don't... <laughs> The stadium's over there. This is not what I thought we were going to see. I saw this little road here, and I thought, oh, it's going to be the restaurant. Actually, this is just the back entry. I like the fact the Street View van went up there. Here is the stadium from the outside. Why does it look like a prison? Well, it doesn't look particularly welcoming, does it? I'm going around the edge trying to work out how you get in. It's all just boarded off, I assume. Well, I don't know why. How do you get in here? I mean, it looks like there are some little doors. Do they just open these bars on match days? It doesn't feel very welcoming, does it? The exterior screams prison. And what is the inside going to be screaming? Oh, okay. We've got the answer to our question. Yet yeah, the bars that they get opened and then you can walk in here. 
Why have they got that on the outside? Is it just stop people breaking in? To, to stop people smashing the windows? I have no idea. Now, I should say now, this footage is a little out of date, or a little bit out of date. They've updated their badge since this, haven't they? Uh, this is in 2015. If you think the fact that this footage is almost 10 years old is going to put me off, though, uh, you're mistaken. Uh, how do I get anywhere here? Tell you what, the painters and decorators, they really should have put something down to protect the carpet, shouldn't they, before they painted this wall red? Amateurs. I'm just having a little cheeky peek of the pitch from this executive box I've ended up in. It looks quite cool, doesn't it? Good seat art. I guess there's an L behind this sign. I'd assume there is. Either that or they've misspelt their own team name. How is it with away days I always end up in the changing rooms? Like, this this is a common theme at the moment. Also, is that a Segway? Oh, no, it's just a bin. For some reason, I thought they had a riding Segway just in the training ground. Could have had been a thing, couldn't it? I've also just noticed in the top left, this footage is from 2007. This is like a relic of times gone by. Can we have a look at the toilet facilities, please, at Lille FC? They've got uh, one sink for the entire team. Lots of showers, though. We've got a, a gymnasium area for Lille. I want to check something. Lille have got four and a half star training facilities. And now we know this is the visual representation of what it looks like. If you have three treadmills, four and a half stars. Why does the away dressing room have kind of hospital energy? I think it's the choice of blues and kind of greens. It just it feels quite hospitally. I'll tell you what, this part of the stadium's pretty cool. You can kind of walk around the entirety of this walkway and just kind of observe the game. I mean, obviously, you wouldn't be able to do this during a game, but yeah, you can access any part of the stadium by just walking around. You are going to have slightly restricted viewing if you're tall and stood up at the back, but that's fine. And actually, we can walk out onto the Hello Turf, can confirm there is an L. Here is the stadium. I kind of like the look of it. I mean, the prison architecture on the outside, horrific, did not look good. This actually looks quite nice. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the zigzaggy beams. There's something about it that I'm liking, and I feel like I'm not meant to like it. I will say there is a distinct lack of footage taken by fans. We can go through all the dated Google footage that doesn't look nearly as impressive. But yeah, we don't have any sample of it on a match day. So I can't really judge the atmosphere. Not that you can ever judge the atmosphere based on images anyway. This is a really tricky one because it's a stadium that had a lot of footage and in a bizarre way, I kind of like the interior even though it did encapsulate the modern soulless complaints that I normally have. Also, the bars on the outside, not my favourite. Car parking was okay. The Stade Pierre Moroy... <sighs> this might be harsh. 5 out of 10. Yeah, 5. I feel like Lil fans are fuming. They saw me give Nice a great score yesterday, and now they've been done dirty. Look, if you had a KFC, the score would have been higher. Anyway, we need to focus on the game today. I talked about this last kind of match when we took on Nice last episode, but in European competitions, I am playing a full-strength team. Ordinarily, you might be rotating things a little bit to keep legs fresh, but given how the league's looking, top four looks all but guaranteed. I've been rotating the team more in that, and as a result of that, we're ready, refreshed, and, well, prepared to go in this one. Have also just realised... I get three more subs, don't I? The best thing about being in European competitions is having 12 players on the bench. I feel like I should acknowledge we've got very, very lucky with injuries so far this year. We've not had that many serious ones to speak of. At the start of the year, of course, we did have loads stacked up, but as we headed towards the tail end of the year, there's not been that many to speak of. Occasionally players having cold, stubbing their toes, getting blisters, you know, the week-long injuries, but nothing too serious. And I think that has helped us just in terms of, uh, well, competing as we have in the Premier League and doing so well in the Europa League as well. Now, Lille are playing a 4-1-2-1-2. They're playing the diamond formation. It's not a fit system we've come up against a great deal. I would like to think that our fullbacks can have a field day on the overlap, but in the middle, we might be at risk of losing the battle of the midfield, although maybe you don't need to win that battle if you've got Rojas pulling the strings. Lee Min could shoot, does shoot. Did that just deflect in? Uh, it did. Okay, Jonathan Tomkinson, you've got very unlucky there, but we have taken the lead. I don't want to get, you know, too premature with all of this. What if this is just a repeat of the Nice game? What if we win 5-0 here? Do we just do Brentford? I guess we'd just do Brentford. You know, we've done it once, we'd do it again. I'm a little bit surprised of how big the gap between ourselves and other Europa League teams has been. I feel like we did get an easier run of games to actually play in the uh, the group stage, namely when we had those eight matches. But even in the knockout stages, Nice we dispatched off well. Don't want to get too carried away here against Lille. There's still loads of football left to be played, but we're in a commanding position statistically. We've not been... I want to say truly tested yet. I think against Fiorentina, they took the lead in a group stage game and we came back. But beyond that, there's not been a scare yet. I'm going to hope we can avoid 
Scares in this one as well. Haroldson's shot there was not far wide to draw level, though. Would be very on brand, wouldn't it? Me talking about how simple and straightforward the Europa League's been if now they really give us a game. I'm saying that a 1 0 up. I'm getting carried away. They're still in a position here. Oh my word, they've just scored an overhead kick against us. Andre, it might be the best goal I've ever seen. That's Andre Santos who plays for Chelsea, right? The defensive mid. What has he just done to me? Sorry, what has he just... He's gone in off the crossbar as well. I can't believe it. I actually... You know, fair, fair enough. It's the best goal I've seen all year in football manager. It's an overhead kick in off the crossbar. It's like a two-for-one combo of sexy goal things. It's 1-1. One, one. I'm going to get shouty, shouty. I'm in shock. Can you Have you seen a goal like that? I've not seen a goal like that before this year. I mean, suddenly that whole thing of, oh, it's very easy in the Europa League. It's 1-1. One, one. It's 1-1. One, one. Um, should we make some changes? I feel like we probably should. Uh, Rojas isn't having the best of games. I am going to bring in Areco to play alongside Sam Fay up top. Elsewhere, Misiak. Going to drop him for Kurland. And I'm going to make another change, I think. Riviere off for Anderson, and NDIA on for Lee Min. I might be going crazy here. Four changes. Some would say I'm panicking. I would just say I'm being proactive. You know, let's get as many changes made as we need to, get some fresh legs in the final third, take off some of the underperformers. Of course, having said that, if Lee Min, who I've just subbed off, gets an assist, it's going to be awkward. I'm going to stick with the subs. I really like Misiak. I've subbed off as well, haven't I? The guy who's got the assist and the guy who's scored, I've just subbed off. Do I cancel the changes? I feel like I should probably cancel the changes now. Um, now, you know what? I'm going to stick to my guns. Might be stupid. They might have just done a, a moment of magic, but to that point, they were crap. They don't deserve to be on the pitch. Do I want to proceed with these changes? Yeah. Yeah. Get off the goal scorer and the man who just got an assist. I'm bringing in fresh legs. I might look like a genius. You know, if NDIA now does well and Curlin does well and Areco does well, I thought they were all going to link up there and I was going to look like a genius. Um, that would have been good, wouldn't it? NDIA, he's got it in the wide area. Makes of it magical happen. Make me look smart. Anderson, Pelagata, goal, 3-1, breathe. Bit of breathing room, finally. I feel like we've needed that. I'm not sure if it's exclusively because of the overhead kick, but I don't know, I was nervous. Even at 2-1, I wasn't feeling comfortable. I guess it's because I know their players can do stuff that's obscene. That was a nicely worked goal, by the way. Anderson, another assist for the young Danish defensive kind of playmaker. Really liking his contribution to the team since he joined us. NDIA, throw in on the far side. The subs, I don't want to say it too loudly. They look like they're making stuff happen. NDIA, Faye, uh, it's 4-1. I look like the smartest cookie in the biscuit barrel. The smartest cookie in the biscuit barrel. I just wanted to mention biscuit barrels again. We discussed them a few episodes ago, didn't we? We love biscuit barrels in this house. We love Sam Fay in this house. He's wearing the captain's armband. He's now on the score sheet. I feel like 4-1 is in this awkward region where it's not quite comfortable enough to not commentate the second leg, but equally, it should still be a formality. If we get another, we're doing Brentford. Pietro doesn't want us to do Brentford. He's just smashed it over. Saying all of that, there's, there's another highlight immediately. Chevalier in goal for Lille. They've not had a particularly good time today, the French team. And I want to keep the bullying going. Is, is that unfair? Is that harsh? I just want to, I want to bully them as much as possible. Oh God, they're on the attack. They, I was about to say they've scored. It's gone wide. Did her dad save that? Her dad saved it. Give her dad some credit. Seven minutes left in this game. We have been playing really, really well. I do still have one sub that I can make. I've not made it yet. Should I make it? I who can I bring on? I don't really want Bolton getting sent off. So Mascara, on you come at right back, my friend. I feel like there's been a lot of highlights in this game. There's another one here. Pella Gatta doing some dirty work there. The centre attacking mid go going on some defensive duties. We like to see that from our entire team. Now we have possession. Can we make something happen? Fawns to Anderson. Already has one assist, the youngster. Not going to get another assist with wayward passing like that. He gifts the ball to Lil. Murillo now with the ball for them. Gifts it to Faye. Oh, my word. He's just robbed him. Faye, he's done a robbery. He's legging it back to Glasgow. And he's putting the ball in the back of the net to make it 5-1. That's probably game over in this one as well. Murillo's just caught out with the ball, isn't it? He's just going for a walk with the ball. He thinks the ball's his pet and no one else is going to steal him. Well, surprise. Faye is the Cruella de Vil of football. He's stolen the ball. He's put it in the back of the net. Sometimes I say commentary that makes no sense. And we just all have to nod and just pretend it was normal. That is one such moment. Let's not question it. Um, could, could we get a sick? Surely not. NDIA. A record. We need to stop doing it. We're bullying teams. We are bullying teams. They're goalkeepers. He's forgotten how to catch the ball he's so 
rattled. And with that last little highlight there, the game is going to finish 5-1. Uh, you know what? I don't think we need to do the second leg, do we? I think I think we'll do Brentford. That is a really good result, mind you. Really, really happy with that. Sam Fay, man of the match, not for the first time this year. He has been the standout performer. Turns out he's not just a great centre attack in mid. He can also play as a striker. Now, like I already mentioned, we have got Brentford to play in a game in a few days' time. I think we'll do that game in a recap -y manner. And the same with the Lille game. I'll kind of just talk as significant stuff feels like it's happening. Um, you know, show you guys some goals, show you guys some action. I feel like the Lille game should be done. But I kind of want to see how many we can score against them at home. Just before we get into the Brentford game, forgot to mention this earlier. Next Gen Award. We didn't win it this year. Last year, we had the top three players. This year... One of three, Misiak coming in second place, which to be fair, when you look at his development and how he's performing, I can see why he's ranked that highly. And for people wondering about the tip players who kind of pipped us, they both play for Wolfsburg. The first is Patrick Gullenbeck. He is a 19-year-old striker. He looks very, very good, to be fair. The other guy, though, Suslik, just makes me angry to look at. Can you tell why I'm angry? Try, see if you can figure it out. Look at the positions he can play. Centre back, defensive mid, left mid, right attacker mid. It makes, look at his polygon. Why does this man know how to play centre back? I'm just angry. Anyway, hopefully this game is going to calm my nerves a little bit. 19th place Brentford, a team we should be beating. Because of how emphatic the win was in the Europa League, I'm going to go with a full strength unchanged team for this game and then play the rotated team for the second leg against Lille. I think that makes the most sense. Like I said, the two games we're going to do now are going to be more recappy. They should be straightforward. If it stops going to plan, it might be less recappy. Uh, I hope we get goals. Okay, five minutes into this game. First highlight. Should I be concerned that Brentford have the ball? I hope not. Forms to Riviere. Plays it forward. Pietro. Options on the left for Rodriguez to look for. Lee Min with a little bit of space in front of him to make something happen. Misiak, great touchdown. Build-up play superb here, by the way. Bolton. Rojas scores it. If he's onside, that is an absolutely insane, beautiful passing goal. My first instinct was... He was offside, so I don't really want to celebrate it. What's going to happen here? He was offside. That's annoying. It was good football too. Bolton with the ball in the wide area. The fullback plays it inside. Rojas goes down in a heap. Lee Min keeps it alive. Misiak, Riviere. Still got the ball here. We've had some pretty good possession in the early phases of play. Brentford not creating a great deal either. The question now is, can we find a breakthrough early? This is the kind of game where you don't want to be stuck without a goal for a while. And the good news for us is... We're not going to be stuck without a goal, or are we? Referee checking VAR again. Is this one going to count? Sam Faye with a beautiful finish. This one is going to count. Pressure had been ramping up just for a little while. Misiak to Fawns. Fawns dinking it forward. Great pass through there. And Sam Faye, little tidy finish at the near post. Makes it 1-0. Half time in this game. Still only 1-0, but we have been in control of this game. Not had too much to report back on. If we play like we did there in the second half, we should win this game comfortably. Our played here, still only 1-0. I've made a couple of subs just to freshen things up. NDIA's come on, Curlin's come on, and Sinkule's come on. Trying to get the young attacking players some game time. I feel like there is a goal just coming for us here. It's a case of if, not when. Curland, could you prov provide it? He very nearly did. His shot hits the woodwork. Sinkule's then offside. I thought I was about to just manifest a goal there. Sadly... It's not gone in. Fawns bringing the ball forward, lays it to Curland. He left the woodwork shaken with his last effort. This one falls all the way to Sinkule, but he's denied by the keeper. So we have just made it 2-0. I'll be honest, we saw the Sinkule chance then. It went out for a corner, and I thought, no, no, nothing's going to happen from this corner. This is just the pointless corner highlight. No, I was bamboozled. Sam Fay lashing it in on his weaker foot into the bottom corner. Second of the game for him, second for us, 2-0. That should be the game. Only a couple of minutes left of this game. It's not been the most comfortable in terms of it took a while to get the second goal, but Brentford did not have a shot on target. You can see why they're down in 19th. They were just not dangerous on the attack at all. A good win for us there. To be honest, I probably could have, maybe should have, made a few more subs as the game went on, but it just didn't really feel necessary. That result there pulls us level on points with Liverpool. We are only one point behind Arsenal, but they do have a game in hand. Over our shoulders, though, crucially, with six games left of the season, we're nine points ahead of Manchester United. I feel like at this point, top four feels like a certainty. Unsurprising, really, Sam Fay, man of the match. Since he's moved to the striking position with the departure of Ospina, he looked very, very good, to be honest. Another top quality display from him here. Anyway, we've still got one more game to do today. It's going to be Lil. I'm going to play a completely rotated team. We're 5-1 up. This should be a formality. It really should be a formality. Let's see if we can make it that.
Jumping straight into this second game against Lil, uh, worth noting, I know there's going to be people concerned, Jack, you didn't do the away day at the Coventry ground you've been playing your Euro European games in. Threat not, um, we will be playing in this stadium again next year. So there will be definitely an opportunity. I have also noticed there are some teams still in the Europa League whose away days I've already done. So it might come sooner than that, but for now, we just need to get the business done. We won the first leg 5-1. This should be straightforward. The team is so rotated here. Sinkule's on the pitch, Goma, Anderson and Co. An early goal will just steady the nerves and make me believe the B team will do it, but I don't feel like the B team can lose by five goals. I feel like something could have to go very bad for that to happen. We did just have that initial shot from Ranger. Reco whipping a ball of quality. 19 crossing. Can't pick out Phillips. Anderson, though, is under it. Takes it down, hits it. Just over. We're starting this game on top. Halfway through this first half, we did have a goal just ruled out for offside. It was not worth talking about. It was so far offside, he's not even made the video. I just stared at the highlight, annoyed, and didn't even commentate over it. Oh, I mean, that is a ridiculous goal to concede, isn't it? 25 minutes played. I mean, Lille have got one back here. Jean Victor, NDIA, Jean Victor smashes it at Kochu's head. And then it falls to Broya to score. Right, Areco, 19 crossing. Do something magical, NDIA. Is not a magician, he's headed it over. Curland, your turn, right foot, in swinger, back post, NDIA, not a magician, heads it straight at the keeper. If they get another goal back, do I start to panic? Like 5 3 at that point? Do I need to worry? Iwanemi has won the ball well there, although we have given it straight to them. Almeida, don't do it. Haddad save like that. Haddad has made a lot of low-key important saves for us, I feel like, at points this year. He's made another one there. We do now still have a corner to deal with. Our best friend, corners. We're really good at dealing with these, he says sarcastically. Although on that occasion, we did deal with it. Okay, I can't believe what I've just seen. I, I didn't even start commentating over the highlight. With these shorter highlights, I think I'll talk when I feel like there's a chance about to happen. When you witness what's happened here, you'll understand why I've been caught completely off guard. Chevalier rolls it out to Tomkinson. Tomkinson scored an own goal last game. He gave it straight to Sinkule and then Areco shoots first time and it's in. It's 6-2 on aggregate. It's 1-1 on the night. 45 minutes down, we're in control of this game. We're doing brilliantly. Keep it going. We're not actually doing brilliantly, but we're doing brilli brilliantly enough. Considering this is a fully rotated team, the players are playing fine. I would be interested to know, actually, especially if you're still watching the video at this point, do you prefer this approach to when a first leg has been a bit of a formality and wrap things up where we still just come back and do the game? Or would you rather I do what I did last episode where I don't do the second leg, but I do the league game in between in more detail? I, I feel like it's good to just see the reserve team play a little bit sometimes, you know, see what the kids are doing because... This is a lineup that we have used semi frequently in European matches, especially in the league stage and indeed in the second leg against Nice previously. We've looked good in this game. We've definitely not looked outclassed by any means, and we could find ourselves ahead on the night. Areco scores. I'm pretty sure he's offside. Yeah, can confirm offside, but only by a whisker. Have just made a couple of subs. We've brought in Orovec, the uh, young centre defensive mid, and also Hikmet, the, the guy we signed for a million pounds on deadline day because he was there. Um, hopefully they contribute with something in what's left of this game, although I'm not really giving them loads of time to shine here, nor do they need to shine particularly bright, especially with Lil. Just having chances like that, they are rubbish. Three minutes of added time at the end of this game, just as I think things are going to wrap up and wind down. Well, I thought for a moment we were going to get another to win the game on the night. I mean, we still could and Goma shots blocked. Yeah, Lille have not been good in this game. It's been a more open game, to be honest, this one. There's been 28 shots between the two teams. Somewhat surprising that it's only 1-1. Still only 1-1. I thought for a moment they were going to score one there with a, literally the last kick of the game. The ref is going to end the game here. 6-2 it finishes. We are through to the next round of the Europa League. Elsewhere, Abertine knocked out Celta Vigo. Freiburg have knocked out Villarreal. And Wolfsburg have knocked out Porto. And in the semi-finals, we get to take on Aberdeen. I'm sure there are some Scottish viewers pumping their fists right now. They are delighted by this. We get to take on Aberdeen, whose key player is a re... Wait, their key player is a regen. He's very good, isn't he? He's very... He's very... Does he want to join me? He probably doesn't want to join me. He's very good. 
I'm going to earmark this guy. He is great. Now, the first leg of the Europa League semi-final is not that far away. It's going to be on the 27th of April, so I guess I'll be back in two weeks for that one. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I do feel a bit weird when we hammer teams in the first legs of European competitions. I'm not sure what the best way to approach that is from a creator point of view, so if you've got any thoughts on the way we've handled it in the last couple of episodes, would appreciate your thoughts down in the comments below. Besides all of that, have a lovely rest of your day. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you on the next one for more. I'm out.